Hello, Trilogel here, and in today's video, I'm going to be showcasing a base that I made in the Meteor Maker open beta. So let's begin. Now, this is some of the only footage that I took of the Meteor Maker open beta, so bear with me here. Now, this is a duo, which, you know, duo, I, I would say that duoing uh, in the Meteor Maker open beta, at the very least, it's pretty strong. They can just revive each other. You'll see this in the video. Now, I watch a little bit of this video, so I know I know a little bit of what's going on here. These guys die to the guards a bit. You know, as you can see, the reviving is very, very strong with that. <laughs> but he pays a, pays a heavy price for that. He dies. Now, I didn't think when I made this base that these guards were going to get that many kills. But honestly, I, when I looked at a lot of my replays, they got tons of kills. Like, what? At least double the amount that I thought they would. Now, right here, these guys already know about one of the traps in my base uh, because they played it before. This is this is sort of a second run that they've done, from what I remember. But essentially, this trap right here is supposed to be so there are second wave hollow cubes, and the guards' patrol paths are essentially I I've set them so that. After like a minute or two, they will start moving and then they essentially follow the path out of the base. It's, it's kind of hard to explain, but basically you can think of them as coming from behind in the section that you're about to see right now. Uh, this section. They're, they're supposed to come in from behind while you're working on the base and surprise you. And it, and it did work a few times, but sadly I don't really have footage of it, so we gotta deal with this for now. Oh, these guys, they're just talking to each other, like, you know, I, I'm guessing this guy's explained the base, because I know that the guy that I'm watching right now, he's played this base before. He's, he's like, he's probably like, you know, listen, listen, buddy, you gotta be careful, I'm gonna try and destroy the tra uh, the traps here. You just, you just be safe where you're standing right there, okay? Now, you really gotta pick apart this base. Uh, I have the incinerators pretty much all around it's essentially how I created this space was sort of on the ideas of safe spots I tried to make sure that there isn't a single place in that uh, in this sort of a line area that uh, wait let me just pause the video right here uh, so basically there's supposed to be no safe spots anywhere without breaking any traps now let me let me play this back so as you can see, there's an impaler on the ground and an impaler on the left side. And the basic idea is that if they don't die to the incinerator, they're going to die to the impaler. You know, it's not... That, that's kind of the basic idea there. And it kind of worked there. Uh, he actually died to the incinerator. Now we got his teammate trying to revive him. Uh, the replay system's kind of buggy, so you can't see the, the revive thing. And he even gets revived up there, and he dies. And I've, uh, you can see right there, I have uh, another setup of the incinerator with the impaler traps. It actually works twice here because they're trying to revive. But these guys in the video, they're they're kind of showing off. They're also showing off the kind of the problems with co-op, but maybe not so much problems because they got a lot of deaths. But yeah, with co-op, you can kind of just revive your teammates and then break every trap and then get out. Which, you know, might be a problem, might not be. I mean, getting kills on your base is pretty good, but... Uh. And as you can see, the explosive, it actually worked there. And I have a double explosive. It, it sort of zones you out, the double explosive, when you use it. I think it's a very good combination with the double, uh, the double impeller sort of thing. Now oh, this guy's just chilling. He's trying to... Trying to look over there. Now I have a guard set up on there. It, it's sort of a... I like the guard there because it's kind of a, an interesting variable. Guards are pretty up. And as you can see... Uh, that, that's kind of the idea of the trap. It didn't work there. It didn't work there. Unfortunately, but... It can sometimes. There's an idea behind it. And I like it. When it works, it works. But when it doesn't, you know... If the, if the player does do something like that, then they kind of outplay the trap, as you can see. 
Now they have a vantage point. They've created a new safe zone. Used a grenade, but the piston blocked it. Now they're just trying to pick apart the base. But anyway, back to the guard. The guard is essentially just a variable in the base that allows for uh, more directions to be less safe. If, if you can understand what I mean by that. And the grenade uh, killed some of, my, some of my traps over there by the corrosive. Got an incinerator and uh, impeller, and he dies in the piston. These guys being very aggressive. <laughs> His teammate died there. They, they definitely probably not happy about that. But they go again. They go again. So, most of the idea of this base is just using incinerators to zone out areas and uh, basically make it so that there are no safe spots. And incinerators are really good for that because they cannot be ref uh, deflected by swords or uh, you really can't arc barrier through most incinerators. For long periods of time. Like you can arc barrier through an incinerator, but uh, I'm pretty sure you can't. Like if you activate your arc barrier and you try to go through an incinerator with the eagle eye add-on, I'm pretty sure you can't from what I played in the beta, but might be wrong about that. I won't, won't say anything crazy about that, but anyway, these guys are just chilling. They're gonna go back into this room. That's another great part about this room, is that. Uh, this trap sort of forces them to... You have to really clear out the room. Because if you don't, they're going to come behind you. And that could be putting you in a more unfavorable position. Right? Now, I actually just discovered that you can take off the HUD with uh, in this video. Uh, I was like messing around with the replay. So now it took off the, the replay HUD. Look at that. Cinematic now. Oh, I even took that out. I'm just messing around with it. I was like, wait, you can take off the you can take off the HUD? What? Yeah, but you can do that. Too bad it's a it's a bit the replay system is a bit buggy in the game. At least it was in the open beta. I can see how it's hard to get correctly in dodge the incinerator. Yeah, I've got I've got a ton of incinerators and plasma sentinels. Uh, Plasma Sentinel is also another great trap, uh, especially with, uh, I think it's called the Plasma Cloud add-on, the one that makes a big circle after they shoot, as you can see, like, right in front of the guy right there, it's the red circle-y sphere, sphere thing, it's a pretty good zoning tool, and just the fact that Plasma Sentinels can attack in a sort of 360 degrees Makes them good on top of the fact that you can you can uh, you can use plasma sentinels as blocks. So, for example, you can put them as uh, you can put them on the path of the harvester as a floor, which you can't really do with any of the other uh, block traps. Like you can't do that with a hollow cube or a corrosive cube, but you can do it with the plasma sentinel. So that's another use. Uh, okay, they're, they're just trying to trigger the traps, you know, create a moment of safeness, uh, because the revive right here is in a pretty unsafe position. They gotta really pick through the base. Really gotta get that safe spot, but, uh, oh, and the plasma sentinel. See, look, that's another great way to use the plasma sen uh, sentinel right there. Because he was sort of in this weird spot in between the blocks, uh, I think the Plasma Sentinel definitely helped there. Definitely helped catch him off guard, and it was able to hit him where, you know, maybe another trap wouldn't, like a bolt shot. So they're picking the base part with the sword, which is sort of how I would do it. You really want to, you know, if you have a sword, pick apart the base with a sword as much as you can. And like, felt the corrosive, unlucky. But you really got to be patient. You got to pick it apart. And that's sort of how I designed this base. I wanted to design this around anti-speedrunning. 
which you can kind of speed run it, but not really. Uh, it's pretty risky because of all the pistons. Uh, and I would say that's, you know, it's probably more trouble than it's worth to speed run it. Like, like it's about as hard to speed run this base as it is to... Oh, and they died. As it is to just pick it apart yourself. And I've had my fair share of speedrunners run this base and people that pick it apart and people that pick it apart uh, usually have a lot less deaths. So I feel I feel like that goes in general for this game. But yeah, a good way to uh, really counter speedrunners is just put pistons and incinerators together because at least in the open beta, incinerator, the flames of the incinerator go through pistons. So, oh, are they going to die here? Oh, they died. Oh, they got stuck in the grapple. But it's it's a good combo to slow people down because uh, you really have to kill the incinerator or, or else there's a good chance that you're going to die and get caught off guard or something like that. So I, I use it a lot here. You really, you, you really kind of have to use pistons like this. Otherwise, people will speedrun your bases and then you're going to be like, man, it's been all this time making a base and someone just grapple through it man what was even the point but that's why that's why you gotta really think about you gotta, you gotta think about people that pick okay well you, make it you, gotta, you gotta think about the people that pick apart bases and the people that speed run bases and how both of those both of those styles do have counters although they're I, I would say that it's kind of hard to counter both of those types of people because people that pick apart bases are very careful They'll make safe spots in places, and then they'll create angles where they can safely just pick apart your base one by one. And that's actually how I play most of the time. <laughs> I play a sort of speed run, uh, speed run, pick apart a base style. It really depends on the base's layout. Like if I see pistons, that's a way to instantly slow me about down in base. So these guys are just. Oh, he plays down the uh, Phoenix pod, and th I think it's called. That allows him to, when he dies, he'll be spawned back at that location. It's, it's decently strong. Oh, he uses grenades, teammates. Killed everything. Grenades are pretty strong against this base as well. You can get rid of so many traps by grenades. But one way to counter grenades is, if you want to fully counter a grenade, put, uh, think, essentially think of, you have one block, of corrosive on top and then one corrosive on the bottom. Pretty much want to create uh, two blocks of corrosive and then uh, you put like a hole. And that's one way to counter grenades. Because uh, as far as I'm aware, when grenades, they, they don't hit uh, two blocks away. Uh, at least like vertically. I'm not sure if I explained that great, but basically just think of a hole of corrosives uh, and the grenade essentially gets caught at the bottom of it, and it doesn't break everything because it's it got caught out, right? Now this guy really wants to revive his teammates. Uh, it's not breaking everything. Okay, now he's really gonna be careful. What's he gonna do? Oh, and he made a mistake. He was impatient. The biggest mistake of all in this game. You really do have to be patient, though. Like, if you're picking apart a base, patience is the absolute uh, king of this game, I would say. The more patient you are, uh, the better chances you have. And if you get hazy like that, then yeah, you get caught off by a trap. And then, you know, you reset the whole run. Now, co-op. Co-op, obviously. Very strong. They don't have to restart the run every time. Oh, and he died. Rest in peace. Just look at my guards there. Uh, I'm not sure if I have any other add-ons for those guards. Oh, I, I think I might have short leash, which makes the guards keep into one of their... Uh, it makes them keep into a radius from their patrol path. So it's basically so they can't just bait them out, but I'm not sure if I have that. I'm, I might, I might not. I'll have to look again because you can't see the add-ons of the guards on like their shoulders. It's like a 
there's like some kind of capsule or something on their shoulders usually that you can tell they're add-ons. But I do know I have the uh, the uh, armored guard add-on, which is pretty good. That gets that gets a lot of people. Usually the uh, armored uh, add-on, it's pretty good. So now they grenade that. Oh, teammate died. Oh. I don't even know they, they died to the plasma cloud. There we go. Also, I just want to mention that corrosive cube I have on the right. Uh, the the idea about that is that, from what I've seen, players will stick to the walls when they're trying to aim things, and I've gotten a lot of people, uh, especially with the uh, plasma clouds in the way, uh, I've gotten a lot of people that will stick to the walls and then they'll die to the corrosive cube because they'll just in, they'll. They'll instinctively cling to the walls, and I just get that cheeky kill in there. And it doesn't happen too often, but when it does, when it does, it is absolutely glorious. Yeah, one of the main reasons to play this game right here. Making a trap like that. Might seem dumb at first. Might seem like the dumbest trap you've ever seen in your life, but hey, it, it's gotten kills before. And that's really what I love about this game. Now that one trap you think is never going to get a kill, sometimes does. Oh, oh, I thought they were going to die there. Ooh. Okay, they're just, you know, taking it carefully. Uh, you know, the replay system, it's kind of hard to tell when the teammate is dead. Sometimes because of the, uh, the revive thing bugs out. So now they're just chilling. Oh, okay. Wait, their teammate was alive, huh? I didn't realize. That was a bit risky, though. Okay, a lot of a lot of stuff going on. Nice grenade, nice grenade. They might get out here. Just running out of bolts. Oh, and the incinerator on that side. So that side, uh, with all the corrosives over there, is it's basically a place. You know, it, it's supposed to be really hard to. Uh, get that side. I have the corrosives on the bottom. I have a bunch of traps in there. And the idea around it is that, you know, people will use one of their shots to kill that incinerator. And then if they go to retrieve it, then they're met with tons of traps and a difficult situation to be in. You know, I, most people don't actually go that way. But the people that do usually die. They usually don't make it back. And it also has anti grenade measures. So it's hard to grenade. So, you know, kind of a kind of a tough spot for people, but you can really just ignore it a lot of the time, especially if you're in co-op. And they died to that incinerator. Look at that! That little incinerator right there. The incinerator that that could. I keep thinking that guard is like alive, but it's just the replay bugging out. And you know what? More than anything, I'm surprised by the plasma sentinels and what they, what they choose to like attack. Like, I did not expect there to be a plasma cloud right there. Okay, they're they're in a pretty good spot. I think they might get this. Uh, there's a good chance. But really, the the idea behind the space is pretty simple. Nothing too crazy. You just want to put the incinerators with the pistons and prevent a speedrunner. And the plasma sentinels create difficult situations. And, you know, it's a lot of chaos. You could call it a kill box, as some people might say. Um, but it has a few ideas here and there that, you know, sometimes work like the like the uh, warmonger trap, although I can't really sh showcase that. Because these guys already play the base, so they already knew about that. But overall... It's a... Uh, you know, it's a simple base when you think about it. And the fact that it's a lot of doing very similar stuff. And I forgot that I had enforcers at the end here. You know, this is just to get maybe like a cheeky last kill. Or something like that. But they're able to do it. So I don't think I have any other traps. That guy's getting really greedy here. And they died. Okay, well they paid the price. 
But these guys have definitely beaten the base and he died again. There you go. That's why I love corrosive. <laughs> That's why I put a lot of those in my base, because even I, like, I'm, I, uh, in the open beta, I got, like, I got a lot of rank points in the open beta. And even I, well, <laughs> die to the corrosive traps like that. Oh, what is this guy doing? He really wants his bolt on. Or, actually, he's bugging it. I think that was his teammate's bolt up, oh, and he died. Yeah, and that's that. Well, that's the video for today. Join, subscribe. I'm going to be definitely playing Meteor Maker on release. Definitely enjoyed it in the open beta, so that's all.